This episode was made possible with the cooperation and generosity of Stas Lohmann Water Single, Eisa Eisinger Planetarium, and Burdere Recreati. A huge thank you to our partners. Hi, welcome to Yovi's Homeland, the series where Dan and I explore one Dutch province per month for one year. In this video, we are going to show you what we visited in Friesland province. We will cross the Afslaut Dyke, visit Snake, see the world's oldest working planetarium, snuggle up with some baby cows, and even go swimming in the Wadensee. We also have a little giveaway in this episode, so make sure to stick around for the whole thing. Friesland province is located in the northern part of the Netherlands. Its population is around 650,000 people. Unlike other Dutch provinces where Dutch is spoken maybe with a different dialect, Friesland has its own language called West Friesian. To get to Friesland, we had to cross the Afslaut Dyke. The Afslaut Dyke is a dam constructed between 1927 and 1932 that is 32 kilometers in length. The dam serves as a sea barrier to protect the inland against flooding. Driving over this dam with the sea so close, I was reminded of the Pacific Coast Highway in California. If you've ever been there, you'll know why. We arrived late on Friday evening to our hotel, the Stads Logement Water Single in Snake. This monumental guest house from 1870 is stunningly beautiful. It only has five rooms, each with its distinctive style, which makes it feel so cozy and homey. It is a perfect hotel for a romantic weekend runaway. The owner, Freik, and manager, Wenny, are exceptionally welcoming. Staying there really felt like visiting an old friend. We were offered a local beer, the Staatsbrüerei Snake Waterpursche, <laughs> sorry for my <laughs> accent, which tastes so good. And I'm not even a beer drinker, but this was so refreshing and delicious on a hot summer night. Sadly, it's only available in Snake, so you actually have to go there to try some, but if you do go there, don't miss it. Fun fact, Peter Sjord's Herbrandi, who was the Dutch Prime Minister during World War II, lived in this house at the time. So if you stay in the Stads Logement water single, you are staying in a really historical monument. On Saturday morning, we drove to the city of Frankener to visit the Eise Eisinger Planetarium, which is located in Eisinger's former home. Eise Eisinger was born in 1744 and worked as a wool comber, but his real passions were astronomy and mathematics. So during the day, he would comb wool, and by night, he would work on his planetarium. It took seven years to build a working model of the solar system in his living room, which was completed in 1781. I found it so interesting that stepping into the planetarium is like both like taking a step back in time where you can see the bed that Ising and his wife shared as well as the cupboards in which their children slept, which was normal at the time. I think shocking for us now, but normal at the time. And then yet this history is contrasted with icing as forward-thinking mathematics and planetarium. I like to imagine what he and his wife talked about laying in bed and gazing at, at this amazing work. The museum has both permanent and temporary exhibitions and is absolutely worth a visit if you're in Friesland. From planets and astronomy, we came back down to earth when we visited Purderai Recreazi. This family-run dairy farm and recreation center is located in Delfstrahausen. It has been in the Holtrup family for nine generations, passed down from father to son. You can visit it for a day like we did, or you can spend your holiday there. We were immediately greeted with like a very relaxing and peaceful and welcoming vibe. Our gracious host served us coffee in Oranje Cook, are the first local delicacy that we got to taste. From there, we changed into appropriate farm clothes so we could be real farmers while cuddling cows. So, unfortunately, the cow that we were meant to cuddle did not want any cuddling on this day. Um, and this is because we visited the Holtrup family farm on the hottest day in recorded Dutch history. So instead of the cows being in the grassy pasture like they normally would be, they had to stay inside where they were like cooled with giant high-speed fans. Um, so certainly it was understandable why a cow did not want <laughs> more people laying on her and just like making her hotter. Um, 
So we petted her a little bit and then we were taken to the area where newborn and baby cows are housed. Since we were so sweaty, <laughs> the baby cows found us to be delicious salt licks. Um, did you know that cows, not just the babies, but all cows don't have any upper teeth? Their tongues are rough enough to cut the grass on its own so they don't actually need the teeth. And before you worry about, you know, the issues of taking baby cows away from their mothers at, right away after birth, we understand that this is the more humane way of raising cattle. Basically, if you leave the mom and the baby cows together, they will form a bond and then separating them later becomes really difficult for both the babies and the moms. Whereas if you separate them straight away, then no bond is formed and then it's a better life for both cows. So I had a hard time imagining like having a baby and having it taken away from me right away. But in cow world, that attachment is formed a little bit later. So it's just a bit different. So, oh wait, we should say this is farm fresh milk from one of the cows here. It's just been chilled. So we are going to be drinking like the freshest, bestest, tastiest milk. Mm. Even the color, it's a really rich, opaque, creamy color. Oh, I'm so excited. Cheers. Cheers. To Friesland. Cheers. Mm. Mm. After the farm, we headed back to Snake. Notice this majestic waterport gate, which is the symbol of the city. We decided to go for a canal tour of the city, but to be honest, on this day, we should have just gone swimming. It was unbearably hot, and I was tempted to just jump into the canal to cool off. We ended up going under several bridges where we had to duck down to be able to pass under them. After our tour, we had a little ice cream break to cool off. On the table, you can see a little package with Frisian Dumke cookies. If you would like to win these cookies, leave a comment below. I will randomly choose a winner from the comments tomorrow. We were completely exhausted after our adventures and decided to have a relaxing evening in our hotel garden. It was wonderful to have such a nice spot to rest after a really eventful day. We started Sunday with a meet and greet in Leuwarden. Thank you so much to Antje, Chloe, Lilith, and Martin for coming. I promise that we didn't ask for a dress code. It just happened that we all matched each other. So we had some fun posing for um, socially awkward <laughs> and also socially distant photos. Lilith, Chloe, and Anche took us on a little walking tour of Leuwarden, uh, which also happens to be the capital of Friesland. And here we got to see the leaning tower of Leuwarden called Oldehove. Uh, Dan and Zuzana had a splash fight in another fountain. <laughs> I tasted sauerkraut liqueur. It's so nice. It's like, um, it tastes like Christmas. No. Oh. That's what it tastes like. Like, uh, probably use a lot of like all the good Christmassy cinnamon. cinnamon yeah, milk milk. Milk. yeah. Mm, it's delicious. <laughs> and then we all had some ice cream at La Venezia because, once again, it was hot. <laughs> Why are you always filming me when I'm trying to just have a nice and relaxing ice cream? I'm done. Um, but speaking of sauerkraut, which is sugar bread in English, this is another Frisian specialty or delicacy. Uh, I turned my loaf that I brought home, I turned it into sauerkraut pudding after we came back. After saying goodbye to our new friends, we traveled to the seaside city of Harlinge 
For the first time since starting this series, I felt like we were not in the Netherlands, rather in a Mediterranean city somewhere. In Harlinge, you will see a lot of the old style sailboats everywhere, which just adds to the charm. But you guys, seriously, we just couldn't take the heat anymore. It was crucial that we get into the water to cool off. And luckily Harlingen has a beach, so we did just that. Please enjoy these <laughs> clips of Dan walking through the muddy beach of the Wadensee to get into the sea. Uh, do note that we did have an option to go along the sandy route, but we chose <laughs> to go through the mud to experience a bit of the mud flap walking. The sea was warm and pleasant and just a perfect way to end our trip. And just like that, our weekend to Friesland was over. We loved how many different activities there were to do there and really recommend going there. Next up, you guys, is the province of North Brabant. So if you have any suggestions on what we have to eat, see, try, or do, leave a comment below or email us at yobishomeland at gmail.com. Thank you so much for coming on this tour with us. We hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!